In this video, we'll look at how to change the gearbox in your HiMac Slasher. This detailed step-by-step -step guide will give you all you need to know to perform your own gearbox change. Please note, the model shown in this video is a post-2022 design with a two bolt-on blade carrier. Let's begin. Step 1. Gather your tools. You will need a range of impact socket sizes, including 16 or 17mm, depending on your slasher model, also an 18mm, a 19mm, a 27mm, a 28mm and a 46mm. You will need something to rest the slasher on and keep it level, such as workshop trestles. You will need the same again for the blade carrier. You also need a 19mm ring spanner, hearing protection when using the impact socket, a pair of pliers to shape the split pin, a standard hammer or mallet, a torque wrench capable of 600 foot-pound and 1810 newton meters, a standard screwdriver, a large bearing puller with a socket to fit, this is optional, copper grease, high strength Loctite, a quality rag, and lastly you will need someone to help out for a few of the steps. Please note, during this process, any time you use the impact socket, you must use hearing protection. Step 2. Remove the blade carrier. With your trestles or resting place in position, approach with your slasher and carefully lower it down. You may need assistance with helping align the trestles with the blade carrier, while also avoiding where the blades are attached. This is to ensure the weight is distributed equally. If the slasher is level and aligned correctly, use your 28mm impact socket to remove the blade carrier bolts one by one. Put the bolts in a safe place and you should be able to lift the slasher with the blade carrier and blades left in place on the trestles. Step 3. Remove the flange tub from the gearbox shaft. With your machine and slasher positioned away from the trestles, tilt the slasher up so you can access the hub underneath. Ensure the host machine is turned off before working in this area. The gearbox shaft is a tapered spline and the hub is held on very tight with a castellated nut and a split pin. Use your pliers to remove the split pin from the shaft. Then take the 46mm impact socket to loosen the castellated nut but do not remove it entirely. We only loosen this nut just enough to allow the hub to be freed from the spline. Having the nut still threaded onto the shaft will prevent the hub from falling off. There are two ways to separate the hub from the spline. The first, use a standard bearing puller. Alternatively, you can use an existing blade carrier bolt to line up with the gearbox bolts. Then using your 28mm socket, the pressure built up will then force the hub free. Once this is done, put the hub aside and then put the castellated nut back on the shaft to protect the threads. Step 4. Dismount your slasher and separate the motor and motor plate. With your second set of workshop trestles or similar setup, Gently lower your slasher down and dismount from your machine. Using your 16 or 17mm socket, remove the bolts and washers to then lift the gearbox cover off. Get your 18mm impact socket, along with a 19mm ring spanner, to remove the four nuts and bolts that hold the motor plate to the main frame. With these removed, we want to slide the motor and motor plate backwards and away from the gearbox. Get your helper to hold the shaft coupler in place while you slide the motor and motor plate backwards. The reason this assistance is needed is due to the fact the hydraulic hoses can bunch up against the frame behind them, therefore making it very difficult to do with just a single person. Now the motor and motor plate are removed, you can simply slide off the spline shaft coupler. Step 5. Open inspection cover and remove gearbox lock nuts. As there is better access now, take your 19mm socket to remove the nuts on the inspection cover. Now get your 27mm socket and 28mm socket to remove the lock nuts that hold the gearbox to the slasher deck. To perform this step effectively, get your helper to stand by. Use the 28mm socket for the head of the bolt on top and the 27mm socket for the lock nut underneath. Take this opportunity to ensure the slasher on your trestle is evenly placed, the weight is distributed correctly, and that the trestle is flat to the floor and parallel to the other. This is because the next step requires a person to go below the slasher. With one person above holding the bolt head sturdy with a socket, 
and the other below the slasher to remove the lock nut, work in tandem to get all four lock nuts removed. Store the bolts and nuts in a safe place. Step 6. Replace the gearbox. To lift the gearbox out, you may require your helper to assist, as the gearbox is heavy and you need to reach over to access it. With the gearbox removed, take the time to inspect the area to ensure there's no cracks or damage and that the structural integrity is sound. With your helper nearby, lift the new gearbox in and align with the bolt holes. Put the four bolts back in and loosely fit the lock nuts, but do not tighten yet. Step 7. Reinstall shaft coupler, motor and motor plate. Before reinstalling the shaft coupler, apply some copper grease to make it easier to remove at a later date. Then put the shaft coupler back on. Align the motor and motor plate with the shaft coupler and slide back into place. Get your 18mm socket and 19mm ring spanner to fix the four bolts and nuts back into place. When doing this, ensure the motor plate is sitting flush up against the slasher frame. Step 8. Tighten gearbox bolts and reinstall inspection cover. With all these components in place, inspect that the gearbox flange is sitting flush against the slasher body and that the four bolts are still aligned nicely. Get your helper to assist with tightening the gearbox bolts using the same method of a 28mm socket for the head of the bolts on top and 27mm socket for the lock nuts beneath the slasher. The recommended torque for these bolts is 360 foot pound or 490 newton meters of torque. Now you can put the inspection plate back, screw the nuts back on by hand and then tighten with your 19mm socket. If you haven't already, ensure the gearbox is oiled correctly. You will find our slasher oil change video guide with the link in the description. Consult the owner's manual for the recommended oil and quantity for your model. Now put your cover back on and reinstall the bolts and washers with your 16 or 17mm socket. Step 9. Remount slasher and reinstall flanged hub. Remount the slasher to your machine and head back to the trestles where the blade carrier, hub and split pin are. With your slasher tilted upwards, remove the castellated nut, take your rag and clean the threads on the shaft. Please note there should be no oil, debris, paint or other contaminants on the gearbox shaft or in the splined section of the hub. This will cause a false torque reading during assembly. Now take your high strength Loctite and apply to the thread. With your hub in your hands, align the splines to the gearbox shaft and push all the way on. Reinstall the castellated nut and washer, but please note, some gearbox models have the washer as part of the castellated nut. Now take your 46mm socket to fasten the nut. Step 10. Tighten the hub with a torque wrench. Take one of your blade carrier bolts, get your 28mm impact socket and install the bolt through one of the holes in the hub that is situated to the left of one of the gearbox lock nuts. Rotate the hub clockwise until the bolt touches up against the side of a gearbox lock nut. This should prevent the hub from rotating. Now you can take your torque wrench, set to the required setting listed in your slasher manual and tighten the castellated nut on the shaft. You can now reinsert your split pin and bend it around with your pliers. You can also use a mallet or hammer to finish the job. Remove the blade carrier bolts and prepare for the next step. Step 11. Reinstall blade carrier and blades. Now you will approach the blade carrier with your slasher and machine. And like at the start, carefully lower the slasher down towards the carrier. Get yourself or your helper to use a screwdriver to poke through the blade carrier holes and help align the hub with the carrier. With the screwdriver in place to hold alignment, reinstall at least five of the blade carrier bolts and washers by hand. Take this opportunity to apply high strength Loctite to each bolt. Then tighten with your 28mm socket. Carefully raise and tilt the slasher and reverse away from the trestles. At this point, you can reinstall the remaining carrier bolts and washers by hand. Applying the same Loctite, then tighten with the 28mm socket and torque to spare. The recommended torque for these bolts is 360 foot-pound or 490 newton meters of torque. Rotate your blade carrier by hand to ensure smooth rotation and that everything is tight and in place. Step 12. You're almost ready to go. Refer to our Slasher pre-start guide video, link in the description, 
and then you'll be ready to start slashing again. If you require further help with your slasher or have any questions, please call HiMac on 1800 888 114 or just visit HiMac.com.au